Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here, and today we're going to be covering a question regarding why Elster died first on the Penrose. Before I get anywhere here though, there is a spoiler warning. If you have not finished the game and would like to not be spoiled, please click off now and finish the game. It's an amazing story and I highly suggest experiencing it for yourself rather than being spoiled by a YouTube video. And I'll give you time to do that now. With that out of the way, it's time for us to take some time today and consider why Elster died first on the Penrose. But we will be approaching this question not from a no or lore perspective, but rather from one of science. So with no more delay, let's just get right into this. So before we get really into this, let's set up some basics. Elster died before Arianne and the Penrose. This is a fact that is proven by the final parts of Ende, where the current Elster is able to examine a dead Elster, examining her will say the following. I couldn't keep my promise. Despite my best efforts, I eventually fell ill too. It had to end this way. This proves that the original Elster died before being able to help Arianne pass on. So why did Elster die first? Well, to find this answer, we gotta look at some notes first, and notably there are two notes which seem to contradict each other about this question, and about the predicted lifespan of an Elster unit. To begin, one suggests that Elster units have a 860% higher life expectancy than their gestalt partners, stating the following. It should also be noted that pioneer replicas statistically have an 860% greater survivability than gestalt pioneer officers. For the sake of a successful mission, keeping your replica operational rather than prolonging your suffering may be preferable. However, another note seems to argue the complete contrary, and Elsters instead are expected to die shortly after the start of Phase 3, or the 10-year point. Congrats, comrade. You survived 3,000 cycles, reaching the final phase of the Penrose program. With the end of the operational lifespan of your replica unit approaching, it is time to prepare for the final phase of your mission. This could suggest that the Stolts are unlikely to live very long in the Penrose program. However, if you do the math, this calculates to around 1.1 years if 10 years is the average lifespan of a replica. This is not very long at all, and honestly, doesn't make any sense. 1.1 years wouldn't even be entering the second phase of the Penrose program. So, if this isn't the case, then it suggests that the Elster unit can live very long if outside the ship, seen as one moat demarks life of Elsters in general, being 860% longer, and the other, Elsters on the Penrose, stating only 10 years. If this is the case, then the ship could be an influencing factor causing Elsters to die faster. To understand why this could be the case, we can turn to science behind the blood of replicas. First, we gotta establish what is the blood of replicas, and we learn about the makeup of the blood of replicas from two different notes that agree with each other, thus cementing this status. The Euler patient note, and Penrose emergency apex H. These two notes both state that replica blood is made purely out of oxidant. When one considers the science behind oxidants, they will find that these are highly reactive molecules and in biological systems can worsen the effects of cancer. That isn't their only purpose, by the way. They serve a purpose of spreading oxygen throughout the system, and it could even be theorized that the replicas in our case actually use iron, which is an oxidant, as their blood, which would make perfect sense, and there's really no biological reason why that isn't something you'd want to do. But when you combine radiation in this situation and combine the knowledge that the reactor is really going to be the thing that's failing in that third phase of the Penrose program, a fact that's widely supported by Arion's own development of cancer from the radiation, we can determine that the same cancer that was slowly killing Arion across her notes would likely kill Elster very quickly. Because if radiation is exposed to these oxidants and the blood that's all over Elster, it's going to rapidly carcinogenate and that's going to kill Elster very quickly. This also note, you know, mentions and it, and it explains why Elster units would approach a very quick operational end during phase three, as as soon as that reactor starts failing, they're going to succumb to the radiation far faster than any human and thus reach their operational lifetime end. And if they're off the ship, if they exit the Penrose on a planet or whatever, and there begins to be some level of bioresonant climate changing, then we can also assume on that planet that there's not going to be as much radiation and they won't die as quickly. This left Ariane in a situation where she was unable to be put to rest by Elster, as Elster just died before she could. I mean, Elster probably got sick and died very quickly, so even Elster and Ariane couldn't really, you know, be prepared and act accordingly with the situation at hand. 
I thought this was just an interesting situation where we can sit down and look at both the science and the notes in the game and come to a conclusive well, conclusion as to why Ulster met the unfortunate fate she did. And I just thought it was something that you guys would enjoy as well. This has been Christopher Beast. If you enjoy, I appreciate the likes, I love comments, and subscribes if you want to see more. I have three discords linked in my description. One is my main, one is the unofficial Signalis Discord, and the other is the r Signalis Discord. All cool places that I recommend you check out. But that's all I've got for you guys today. Hope you all enjoyed, and I hope to see you all, well, next time.